SNL obviously was like such a, it must have been cl so clear to you that that's where you belonged. I mean, even if it wasn't yes. clear immediately to SNL, it must have been clear to you. For me, it was where I where I wanted to be and where I I love the puzzles you have to put together at that show. You know, like when it's that meeting between dress and air and you have to like take off a minute of your sketch. I love that, like trying to figure things out and what jokes can go. And I don't know. I love that sort of like, I don't know how my brain works. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, and that and just like the writers there when I was there and the cast, I was so lucky. And I don't know. It just felt like didn't feel like work mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. But I knew when I got there, I was like, I'm going to be here for seven years. I didn't want to go longer than that. I don't know why. I just kind of felt like when you get there, you know, you kind of feel like you're walking into someone else's living room. Like everyone else knows each other so yes, well. Yes, yes. It's and high school. Like, it's a big, it's a scary high school. It is. And I'm not putting it down. No, I, no, people no. People are, because I sometimes, when I talk about SNL, sometimes people misinterpret it and say, uh, it was frightening, terrifying in some ways. And uh, also, uh, I kind of wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, it's not like anyone was mean. Everyone was so nice. But it's like you're going to a new school and yeah. everyone's been there forever. As soon as I got there, I was like, the moment I feel totally comfortable here is when I have to go. <laughs> 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 because I feel there's there's something about the energy of that place and what right. you need to produce and how you need to like always be, I don't know, people watching on the Sunday that you're off. I don't know. I just felt like there's something about that place where you just need to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it, yeah. it does. Yeah. Well, there's that old analogy that I, I, I think is so perfectly true, which is the oyster, you know, you, you need a little bit of sand in the oyster to make the pearl. You need the irritant. And yeah. I just think many times in life, I've been uncomfortable and not, and nervous and something really good came out of and it. The, yeah, and that's when you're really proud of yourself and you're like, wow, I did that. And, right. And thank God it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, Not SNL, though. That was very hard for me to leave. But Well, I mean, just, I mean, it's ridiculous to even try to go through all the characters, but do you have a favorite? I mean, I know you've been mentioned, that, mentioned before, um, but is there someone who really speaks to you? I mean, there's so many, I mean, I, I, the first time I saw Denise, <laughs> with oh. the prosthetic forehead <laughs> yes. and doll hands. <laughs> um, I told you I loved, I mean, I love Gilly, but her dance uh, and uh, Penelope and Jesus I, Christ. I feel like my favorite one, honestly, was someone I did on Update, not even a ton of time, but her name was Aunt Linda. Yes, Aunt Linda. She was <laughs> the eye rolling alone yes because she was based on someone that was on a plane <laughs> and uh remember back in the day they would show there'd be one screen mm -hmm. and they'd be like the movie starting and then you'd have to put your head yeah, it would just yeah. start at that time you didn't get your own personal you one. didn't get your yeah. own one and it was the matrix and she was so confused. The Matrix. And the she, Matrix on a plane. She was just like, what? She's like, why is he flying? She was like, ah. Oh. She was so angry. And she was so loud. And I was like listening to her and writing down things she was saying. And she's like, now we're flying. Like she was so upset and confused. And it just made me laugh. And so I did that at the Groundlings, which also made it feel better when I got it on SNL. Um, and we tried it. Uh, the way that I wrote it at the Groundlings, but it didn't work in a scene because... No, no, you, it was so it, smart. It just didn't work. Because <laughs> Lauren was like, I think people would be walking away from you constantly. <laughs> it didn't work. Putting her at the update desk. Yeah. And her job, my favorite thing, it's sort of like, it's sort of... Um, akin a bit to, I'm a wealthy society woman and I want someone to set up my home beautifully for the big party. I've hired the three stooges <laughs> and three idiots who've never, who have no qualifications show up with saws and hammers and smash the whole house. What I love is they hired you to review films. Yes. And it's perfect because <laughs> you have nothing but disdain. <laughs> you yes. don't seem to understand the movies. No. You just want to make a wisecrack and it's yes. just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> also, it looked like it's, you kind of had to, uh, you have the, all the different takes that you would do, the sarcastic the sarcastic takes that you would do. Uh, yeah, and I think the ones that you can have a little more fun with, and it is kind of different every time, are always more fun, I think, than the ones that are like very um, rigid in how they react to stuff. I don't yes. know. I mean, yeah. Well, it's, it's not, if your character has one, I remember at the Groundlings, there was just this pressure 
when I was there, you could see uh, every student thought they had to have a catchphrase. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that was just a phase. Yeah. And I think it was all because John Lovitz had blown up as the, you know, as the liar on SNL. Mm -hmm. um, that's the ticket, you know, and having a catchphrase and, and Dana Blend blew up as church lady. Of course, there was a lot more to those characters, but their catchphrases were really huge. Well, isn't yeah, that special? That's true, yeah. And so I just remember characters coming in you know, trying out scenes and everybody was like, yeah, not a flapjack I'd buy. And, you know, <laughs> Looking right out to the audience. Right out to the audience. And then they'd say it like two more times. And I just, uh, Lisa Kudrow used to get mad at me because she, she said, you, you sit there at rehearsal and people are trying this stuff out and you have your head in your hands. <laughs> oh, God. And she said, they can fucking see you. And I'm like, I'm sorry. That's a flapjack I could buy. Was that a real one? No. Oh. Uh, I know there was so someone... you can use it if you want. Yeah. I know. I was like, <laughs> I saw you writing it down. People had ticks, like they, they you know, right, right. slapped their thigh on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> slap your thigh, cough twice, <laughs> and uh, so it just looked like a Tourette's convention for a while there. But one thing that I liked so much about the work that you did at SNL. And then again, you brought that to Bridesmaids is you can go so quiet, you, you, can, you can be so small and it's perfect. I think it's one of the reasons I get drawn in. You're not trying to blow me off the roof with your comedy a lot of times and you can go big, but you also can go very small. And then, uh, you know, and then that was one of the things I thought that, uh, made bridesmaids so special was how quiet things could be. At times, there are there are big set piece scenes and there are scenes where you can go big, but how quiet the disapp your disappointment could be, your confusion, oh, uh, and that just the comedy doing that kind of comedy. It's like this little porcelain comedy that's beautiful. I don't, I don't know. I was that's, just right. Wow, thank you for saying that. Thank well, I really, I, I, I don't know that it means anything. <laughs> I've never <laughs> no, really been it, in a movie. So. It does. It does. It means a lot. <laughs> Very poetic I, little porcelain. I know. Comedy. Well, I, it is. It's, I, it's, I like it's, that. I've, I just think that many people can come from a situation like the Groundlings or SNL and think that the, you win when you go really big all the time. It can be, I think it can almost instruct you to have a uh, and and look, there are plenty of times on late night where you're going in every day and doing an hour where you think going big is always the answer. And then sheer amount of time, you start to see that sometimes going very small is such a relief and such a contrast yeah. that uh, it's, it's just like music. It's just playing on a different yeah. different part of the instrument. But I don't know. I, I, I just loved it as a, as a fan of yours that you're able to do that. Thanks. And that's all the time we have. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's nowhere to go that's after like, that. That's such, I don't know what to say. Thanks. Well, I want to say one thing okay. that was about improv. Okay, yeah. Because I'm wondering if you agree with this. There's so many people who say to me, improv is such a scary thing. And I just lied right now because I have done some small stuff in movies. And I prefer improv because oh. I like people think, oh my God, it's so terrifying when you have to make it up. And I have this thought in the back of my head, uh, for example, like two years ago or a season and a half ago or something, Will Arnett called me up and he said he had this show called Murderville and it's all improvised. And I love Will. Me too. And I wanted to do it. There's no preparation. You just show up on the day. Well, that's the thing. There's no... Exactly. You can't say the line wrong. Exactly. And sometimes you can get in... Tim yeah, it, it kind of depends on what it is. But like when I'm watching improv... I get more nervous because I'm like, what are they going to say? Right. Um, or what would I say? Or, oh, God. But and when you're, fear for the person. But when you're doing it, yeah, exactly. But yeah. when you're doing it, you're like, oh, well, I'm just responding. I'm just, I'm just, as long as I know who the character is, I'm just kind of talking. Yeah. yeah. There's something very, uh, I don't know, just liberating about it. I love when they and tell me. And you don't me, have just... to like prepare. It's just, you just go. That's the best part. <laughs> There's no memorizing. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious, did you do Target Lady at Groundlings or was that something that you came yes, up with? I oh, did. you did? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, those I think were the only two that I did there that got on the show. Did you ever get any kind of money from Target? 
No, Conan. <laughs> I've been working on a character called Exxon Mobil guy. <laughs> oh god. Oh! I know you got to think it's like uh, United Airlines. Like, <laughs> what do we use? Look to me. I'm Lamborghini guy. <laughs> hey, I'm Lamborghini guy. Uh, Sona, has there been any call from the Lamborghini people? <laughs> yes, cease and desist. <laughs> hey, I'm Lamborghini. Hey, uh, I'm a Porsche man. <laughs> what? It's, it's a German car. Why are you Italian? I don't know. I didn't think about it. That's the hook. <laughs> Hey, baby, I'm Sam Rolex. God. What? Yeah. Sam. His name is Sam Rolex? Yeah, I wear a Rolex. <laughs> These are characters I'm just, I'm just thinking. That you've been working it, on for a long time. <laughs> yes. And I didn't, I, I thought I was doing something wrong. Clearly you hit it with Target Lady. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm Bill Ozempic, you know? Oh. <laughs> well, I, Bill, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't think I'm good at coming up with good, funny first names. No, I think Sam's it's funny. It's funny. Oh, Jesus. Because it's Sam. I regret working with you on this whole thing. I really thought we would just click together and make an amazing commercial that would make me a lot of money. Thank you. I bet you didn't think you'd be apologizing when you came here to talk to me. <laughs> here, Kristen, we apologize to Conan for not That's earning him more money. 